Welcome, everybody, to uh, Thursday Live uh, after missing last week. <laughs> um, it's good to be back with you. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season and are looking forward to the new year. But uh, hi, Carol. Uh, we're going to be doing a sky today or approaching the subject of skies. Hello, Kathy. Um, uh, we're also going to approach the topic of how to uh, superimpose another thing. I mean, it seems like whenever I find the most amazing skies, uh, I'm not at the place where I'd like to see it. This, um, you, That is a wonderful bridge in Dubuque, but the problem is there's a... a uh, flood wall that prevents you from getting an angle under too much of an angle under that bridge like you can with this one. So we're going to superimpose the uh, Quincy Bridge, uh, which is a whole lot farther down the Mississippi than the Highway 20 Bridge going into Illinois here. So, <laughs> And we'll talk a little bit about how to do that. But skies. Skies are a evolving, living, uh, e they're an event. They're not a thing. They're an event. And every moment, I mean, it is, the sun is creeping up there. It's changing. The clouds are just really just water vapor, and they are changing. So the thing we want to do is we you can't really copy it. I mean, this was one moment, and a second after I took that photo, it was different. Um, we can riff or jam or fugue or whatever your uh, favorite genre of music is. Uh, you can work on this. You can play on this. And as long as you, so to speak, uh, stay in the same key, uh, you'll be all right. Hi, Eric. So um, what do we want to do with this? We want to first, we want to assess it. We want to say, what are the since we're working light to dark, what are the light colors? Um, where are they? The ones that are underneath. And I think in this situation, it's usually pretty easy. The clouds are way closer to earth. The sky is farther away. Um, we have some blues. We have some yellows. The yellows become oranges. The oranges become dusky melon reds. And I'm pretty sure I took this photo because I love what was happening here. I think I like this slightly s more calm water, uh, but I do love the color that's happening here. So right away, I know I'm going to have to mix up puddles of uh, pale yellow, a slightly darker orangey shade, a slightly more reddish version of the orange, and put those in first. And then either by letting them dry or very carefully bringing in some blues, superimpose things like that. Hello, Jan. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a big brush mop here. I think it's a 12 or 14, 14 or 16. And I'm going to make some puddles. Um, here we will, Mark, hello. Um, down here will be the runny paints. Up here will be the slower moving paints. Uh, I'm just going to put some water there, and I'm going to start with some yellow ochre. Our colors today, uh, yellow ochre will generally, even though that's a bright yellow, um, I might smuggle a little bit of a cad yellow or a Hansa yellow into that. Um, but t typically, yellow ochre will do the job in this because we don't want to forget that that, although it is a lovely thing that's setting the mood, it will become the background for this, which is going to be a little more in our face. So we don't want to overdo this too much. So I usually don't remember you, to, to mix your yellow first, because that's the one that color that will adulterate itself most readily. Over here, I'm going to mix a sort of orange shade. I'm going to go just right with my cat orange. 
and a bit more water. Well, we'll see. Now let's have a bit more paint. We can always add water, right? So these are the runny pot. I guess you can't see it here. Let me, here, let's have a look at that. You can see this is runny paint. Because we're gonna, we're gonna be working off a bead and the bleed. So what we're going to try and do is make something happen kind of like this. You can see it's not an exact copy of that, but it's the basic color tonalities. And superimposed on this will be uh, uh, the land and the bridge. So I should probably have some, hi Eileen, uh, some blue ready to go here. I don't have two pockets down there, but I do have one up here. I'm going to get a little bit of cerulean. So you can see I'm sort of kind of, I mean, yellow, orange, blue. Really, this is going to be the kind of, I'm going to smuggle some red into this too. So it's really a triad uh, palette. Um, I just need the orange for the transitional color, and maybe after the first few strokes of orange, I'll put in some of the cad red light or perhaps some quinacridone rose to redden it up. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. Hope everyone is enjoying the the week in between Christmas and New Year, or Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and New Year, and all the wonderful holidays. Hi, Becky. Now, I am going, this is, Asya, hi, are you, how are you? This is an 11 by 15 sheet of uh, 140 pound, I believe, Hanamula or Waterford. Doesn't matter, you want 140 pound all cotton, uh, cold press or rough paper. We're at about a 45 degree angle on the board. You'll find out why that's important. We're going to use a very limited palette. Um, I'm, I've named the cat orange, the, the two yellows, and the, we'll get into some reds in the cerulean. So you'll see we don't need a lot of colors to execute this. So first thing I'm going to do is I don't need much yellow up here. It's going to be kind of bluish. So I'm going to kind of come in with some yellowish water. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad you're better, Asya. Um, it was so many people are having flus and COVIDs and things. Okay, so here is where I am going to begin coming in with the yellow. Now, that is higher than I actually want it to appear. And I'm going to start getting even a little yellower still, get more yellow ochre. The reason we do that is because it's going to sort of shear down uh, when we make this bead. So that's also why I've not bothered drawing the bridge or the land. I don't want this to... Uh, I can position the bridge to the sky uh, more easily than I can reposition the sky to the bridge. Now I'm going to start working into my orange now. So... There's water, uh, it's a dry sheet of paper, but I'm working off my bead, uh, picking it up. As long as there's some water on the paper, you can get back into it quickly. Now we're going to start adding some alizarin to get, oh, John, that's so much. But let's see. Let's get a little more orange in there. It's going to drizzle, and if necessary... Pick it up and make it. <laughs> I'm sure this looks shockingly red. Um, but now here's where things are going to get interesting. I want to have that down through here. So I'm going to need some yellow ochre. And I'm going to run that down through the middle. And here's where why we use the steep 45 degree angle on the board. See, I'm putting the, there's yellow in the middle and there's some reddishness on the side. 
And as long as I can keep that edge wet, if I'm careful here, keep a bead on it, I should be okay. Now, I could probably at this point go into some blue, pick up the bead there. Or the wet edge and don't worry so much if you're getting it kind of uh, blotchy or you know try to keep that edge wet let's get a little more blue it gets a bit darker let's put a little of the red in it because that's not a pure blue is it that bead I hope you can see that bead Nancy hello how are you some little white specks where I missed here. So we'll see if we can make something of those. I'm gonna put some of the red in with the blue. It is the Mississippi. It's not the Mediterranean. Okay, now we need to let this dry and we need to rinse our brush, squeeze it out and pick up any excess down here because remember we're going to have a very strong dark shape boom 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 coming in here like that so clouds um another thing i might mention if you find that you're working on say a bigger sheet and you need to just cover a lot of real estate and you need to move your paint around a little more. Uh, sometimes it's better to spray with a very fine sprayer to keep the pigment moving through the water versus trying to physically blend that with the brush. When you blend with a brush, even if you've got a lot of water in the brush, you are still touching the paper and you are physically pushing the particles of paint along. Whereas when you spray a mist, uh, and I usually do it off to the side and at a distance, um, and let it settle, you add water, and that increases the amount of water gently on the surface of the paper, and then the pigment can swim through it, as opposed to you pushing it along with <laughs> the brush. So... Uh, while that's drying, because I always prefer to, to, to let these things dry by themselves as opposed to uh, the hair dryer, let's talk a little bit about how to do the clouds. Now, what we want to do, I've done some clouds on this, and the sequence went, I mixed up a blue a kind of a dull blue, probably more of that with a little bit of both of those. And I just brought that down, skipping some of the yellow to get some of these high clouds. Um, I'm trying to get, you know, that uh, the sun is way behind these high, uh, I guess they're ice clouds, maybe? They're, they're a little higher up than these ones down here, which are a little denser and a little more water in them to get that. But what we do want, want blah, 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 talk, John. What we don't want to do is try to individually paint all these little tiny gizmos. We want to get the character of the thing. So I'm going to try to get the, these are fun. These are called Buddha boards. When you're painting clouds, what you want to do is look for the, where, first of all, where is it? Because once this is dry a little bit, we can say, okay, my yellow to red transition happens about here. So that cloud needs to be about there or whatever. You want to look for where is it? Then you want to look for how big is it? And then you want to look for what shape is it? You get into the, this is where we're going into the fugue or the riff or the jam. So basically what I see here is a big wedge-shaped 
like a nice wedge of Parmesan or something. And I pull across like that. And then I get these little small bits. And then you want to variegate the size of these things, the position of them. So I've got like a mama, papa, baby there. Um, let's see, there's some small ones that are basically these things, but further away. We just can't see them. Again, don't make them too... Don't symmetricalize them. <laughs> I promise, that's a word. Um, don't make them too much alike in size, too much alike in shape, too much alike in position. Don't equally space them uh, like chips on a cookie or pepperoni on a pizza. So that's basically the idea there. So there's our sky. And then subsequently, we are go oops, I'm going to show you some other examples too. Uh, the bridge is going to come in. And here comes the reflection of the bridge and the reflection of the pylons. Maybe the... And some land. What the heck? So this is the it's it's messy, but hopefully this is the general idea of what we're what we're trying to do here. Oh, I have to get a big pylon in there, don't I? But it's it's that's all we're doing is we're making shapes. It just oops, it glares, doesn't it? I'm gonna make. There we go. Um, we're just making these big shapes, and we're getting the value correct and trying to create that. Now, we're going to do a better job than this, but this is just a big shape. I mean, look at that. I mean, that could be Franz Klein or something from the 50s. <laughs> so, uh, you really... Oops, sorry about the... bumping my head there. Um you really will do yourself a favor to look up artists like Robert Motherwell and Franz Klein um, to see what they do um, as far as dividing space up and creating interesting shapes. It's totally abstract work that's from the abstract expressionism uh, time period. But, oh my goodness, they, they divide a space up beautifully. So now... I need to make up a kind of a pale bluish sky color. So a little bit more. You know what? Let's make it easy. Let's clean out. We're probably not going to use any yellow anymore. So I'm cleaning this area out. But I do want to use some of those colors in the... You can probably see there's things happening in here with the color doing its own thing that are very much like what's up here. So that's the kind of thing we want to take advantage of if we can. So some blue, some not quite pristine blue. I want it a little bit off. And now I'm going to paint the sky above. So I notice that there's a, it's not a straight line, it's kind of a diagonal there. And I'm gonna to try to leave behind little bits of the yellowness. Let's get some deeper blue, flood it in from the top and get a bead. More water. So let's 
it's not exactly like what's there, but it's in the ballpark for the kind of thing that we're looking at. Now here comes that big shape, which I am going to put a little bit of this reddishness in it and a little more blue. Maybe get some of the red. And all of the last few weeks, we have been working with sort of wet into wet situations. And we're going to be doing actually some of that today because we're going to be feeding more color into these shapes. So there's B, there's things I'm evacuating that. I rinsed and squeezed the brush and the tip picks it up. And really, get a brush that's not going to... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get my floppy, sloppy oriental brush, which you can see it, it makes irregular marks. So more blue, a bit of red. To, oh, let's even get some lavender because there's a grayish quality to this. Because there's water on the surface where I'm painting now, what I put in is going to stay there and it's going to swim into what exists. And make a nice transition. Now I'm going to wait a second because I want to, and to, during the time that I'm waiting, I'm going to mix up a little denser version of the same thing. Dense meaning that there's more pigment and less water. So it's, boy, let me do it up here so you can see it. You can see this brush, you can't pick up much with it because it's so floppy, but it does make wonderful shapes. See, that's a little too... I need to take the... Okay, so there's water here. I'm getting a... That looks dangerous. So I'm going to drink a bit of it up. Take it back and make these little ones here. So I'm paying attention to the painting now, almost more than, than the, uh, uh, see, I could go denser than that. So this is slower moving paint. So when I put it into this wet surface, it's going to stay put, more or less. It will soften on its edges, but it won't be a hard line. And we shouldn't be afraid of blotches or hard lines, because I'm going to... Sometimes they just look cloudy. Little floating bits. I love clouds for that. Now, do I want to add more? Make a little redder one, slightly redder. A little thicker at this end, a little thinner at that end. Uh, unequal spacing. Unequal sizes. Some change in the shape character. If you can modify the value ever so slightly or the color ever so slightly left to right, it will look more spacious. There's some wonderful floating, very wispy clouds there. Maybe we could sort of suggest those. I'm going to squeeze the brush, most of the paint out, and I'm going to touch something in there. There's just a little bit of paint left 
I mean, a little bit of water left on the surface. Um, hi, Eric. So, all right, I'm going to let this, before I get that different thing that I'm going to do down here to get a little orangier, that's another word too. <laughs> Hello, Mary. Um, I'm going to let this work on its own. Maybe I'll just put one more little bit in there. The reason, or not the reason, the way you can tell that you can do a thing like that is when you put your head over here and look across it. Uh, the light is tending to come from above and from my right. So I can see the glisten on the uh, paper. So if it's glistening, that means there's water on the surface and you can do something like that. Um, if it's not glistening, it's damp below the surface. The pigment on top is not yet dry and it will, if you bring anything runny in, uh, it's going to create a blossom or a hard edge. So I'm going to soften that edge. I'm going to squeeze the brush out. And I'm going to evacuate these bits here. Okay. Dare I do it? It's probably... There's some rays coming out of there. Because that's still damp, I squeeze the water out of the brush. Let's try it. Yeah, see, so what I'm doing there is I'm lifting pigment. Uh, I squeeze the water out of the brush so it's absorbent. So there was still a little bit of water left there, and I could uh, get away with that. In a couple of seconds, I won't be able to. So if you want to create an effect like that, that's a way to do it. That also, that also illustrates why when we blend, I, I, I suggest if you need to get a smooth fusion, don't blend with the, the adding water from a sprayer, very fine sprayer, as opposed to trying to blend it with the brush. Because when you put a brush on that surface, you're going to, you're going to, Pick pigment up and move it around. Okay, so let's let that dry. Put this off to the side and think about our big shape. We're going to have to get over to this now. I think what I'm also going to need to do is uh, get a nice fusion in here. I need to leave a little bit of some brightness there, get a little bit orangier, come down here and deepen this up because this is actually a little darker than that. So is this the right time to try that? Putting my head over here to look. Uh, I think we can get away with it. So, first, let's, again, we're going to a runny mix of paint with this. So, when you glaze, this is called glazing. Glazing is putting a runny mix of paint on top of a previously painted surface. And that previously painted surface has to be very dry. So for safety's sake, I think I could risk it now, but might not be a good idea. So I'm going to dry it. Cover your ears.
So, what do we got to mix up? We got to mix up. Back to our mop brush. We need to mix up a runny mix of red-orange. So I'm going to get a pale mix of uh, Cad Red Light, which is the tomato-y <laughs> sort of red. And I'd better mix up a good bit of it. So I'm rinsing the brush and I am going to start at this edge just with the water. Then I'm going to go to the red. And then a little more red. Ah, you can't really see this, can you? Yeah, let me just put the whole thing down a little further. Let's get a little more, let's get it start kind of almost crimsony with the quinacridone rose. That's the cranberry red as opposed to the tomato red. Now I'm at the spot about where, I want to try and see if I can mimic some of those Far away clouds. We're getting towards where our water line is going to be. And our so I'm going to need to start coming in with some blue. Now here's where I might want to spray to get this to happen. That's a wet edge. I want to maintain this. Uh, so I'm going between the blue with water and I'm going to just clear water down through here so that that stays soft. Keep a bead. If it looks like I need to start getting more blue, some of this red. You can tell from the drips here, I have to bring this to where the water is before it dries out. It's going to get that soft edge, he hopes. <laughs> The key thing is I have that's getting a little dry. I need to keep that bead going. It looks wet there. Uh, more blue, more blue, a little bit of red from the other side. Let's even put some. Maybe some sparkles in the water, some motion in the water. Wavelets, I guess you'd call them. Put them in at a slight diagonal. Now, a lot of this is going to actually disappear uh, when we put that bridge in. Kella, hello. I haven't seen you in forever. Okay, now that... That needs to dry. Well, should I be doing this? Oh, see, that's terrible. John, That look at how rip roaring purple that is. Good heavens. Let's get some lavender. Let's roll in. While it's very wet down here, I'm just going to make it a wee bit darker. in the foreground. Oh, a darker foreground and a more colorful foreground edge. Hello, Susan. We'll usually pull that bottom edge forward visually and create space without having to actually paint 
a thing in there to make it look closer. Okay, now this, we need to dry. Everything here needs to dry. Nice to have one that doesn't make a noise like that. Okay, so back up to what we can see here. We're going to substitute the Quinsippi Bridge for the Highway 20 Bridge. Now the irony is here, is we're looking at Illinois there, but here we're in Illinois looking at Missouri. <laughs> you can get away with it. This is uh, the midday, of course, but this would be morning. So when we put this in, we're actually creating a sunset rather than a sunrise. But you can do things like that because they're so similar. If, I'm sure if you've looked at your photos, you've noticed that. Um, just keep the thing that you're putting in on the same sort of axis. So if this is a east-west axis, you can get away with uh, flopping it in a different direction. Now we're going to do a little drawing, uh, just just to, for help. Uh, yeah, now I'm glad I put those little rays in because they'll sort of mimic that. The bridge I want to have, I'm going to have the horizon line for the water, <laughs> or the water line, about so. And you're probably not going to be able to see this drawing at all until I start painting it. Um, maybe even a little, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's uh, maybe a little lower. We artists are such fickle. <laughs> Reflection is going to come not to the corner, but it's going to, I might take my China marker pencil and make a mark about where I want that to occur. So I'm looking at the two points there. Um, I'm going to start it just below here, I think. This is going to hit about there and there. This will help me. Because um, once I start slinging that dark paint, Now, where did the pylons? Yeah, okay. The shapes, on, I, I love the shapes on this particular bridge. It's, it's one of my favorite bridges on the Mississippi, although there are several of them that are of a, a very similar, I guess you would say, design. The one in Burlington is similarly designed. There's an interesting one in Bettendorf. Note that this pylon and that pylon and that pylon are like the railroad track perspective. They don't... I mean, in our mind, we know that water is <laughs> flat, but we have to account. If you can look at this shape in here, sort of a keystone shape, that might help. 
Anything that helps, do it. And then that edge is going to be a regular. I am going to make it a little wider so it doesn't get too choppy. These kind of reflections I am going to try to paint. That's why I'm putting those marks there so I can see it. Now I am going to mix up a big, big puddle. Virginia, how are you? Catherine, <laughs> I hope you're feeling better. Um, I'm going to use a big brush, which will hold a fair amount of paint, but is somewhat stiffer uh, for painting this uh, uh, big shape. So I am going to need a slow moving paint and let's get some ultramarine which I should have so you can see this doesn't move too quickly and burn umber that's always a good but I am going to go hard on the blue here I should probably mix up more than one mix let's get a brighter blue for when we execute that and a blacker darker stronger blue and if you need a strong blue your prussian is extremely dark to begin with and it needs a little bit of red because when it hits that burn umber it goes green so that is the very darkest color that I'm going to need for those areas. This will be what I need for there. That I am probably going to have to make a more warm or color, something away from blue. Uh, it probably to you looks a little bit violet. So I'm going to put some of that lavender in there to get a good, nice concrete color and then I'm going to need a uh, gosh I hope I'm mixing enough up <laughs> uh, down here I'm going to mix up a olive color which a good olive color is uh, well you can see when we put this burnt umber into it it started to turn green so if we get some burnt sienna which is a little bit orangier still. You can see how green that goes. And I need a duller green, so let's actually get into some yellow ochre. Oops. Yeah, so I'm getting that yucky Mississippi. Well, the smart thing to do, let's look and see what color our, yeah, our reflections are. Yeah. Okay, put a little bit of red in there to big muddy okay yeah safety sake make extra a little bit of everything you know i mean gosh <laughs> you don't have to be it's not like a recipe or something like that Okay, we're cooking, we're not baking. Um, with baking, ingredients and proportions are extremely important. With cooking, <laughs> perhaps a little less so, right? So here we go, load that brush up, load it from the side, get plenty of it, and I can see I don't have enough. I need to get into this immediately. Now that skinny shape of that uh, thing that holds the wires, <laughs> for lack of a better term, that, look at that, that's not even dark enough, is it? Let's get everything that's dark.
I'm sorry if you're having to listen to my cat. He's bored and he wants to go outside, so. There's a little bit of space under there where the, whatever they call them, attach the bridge. Where's our, oops, no, that's not our bridge color. This was our bridge color. That was our water, or, I mean our pylon color. Now that I'm just going to go dark and I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise to get greener to do our, well this is Missouri so Now there's a wet edge right here and there and there. I hope you can see a little bit of a bead. Oh, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Gosh. There we go. You won't be able to see the colors too much. Uh, so this more turquoise mix is going to hopefully stand for the shore of Missouri. I apologize for that. I, I, I should have started. I wish I had a longer view here or something like that. Now, um, the browner mix. Make sure I've got a big juicy bead going here. That will wait for me. While I do John, okay. Ginger, you're gonna have to entertain yourself. He's not good at that. Okay, now, at this point, I'm going to be going into this more murky olive color, which I better mix more of that up. Always mix plenty. You can always modify it later. More yellow, oh yeah, yellow ochre. Okay, now I need to do the reflections for the pulling down I'm trying to get a wobbly edge there. But the main thing is to cover the area that needs most of the paint. Don't get too hung up in the that stuff like I'm doing. He says don't do it and then does it. Ginger, you're going to have to entertain yourself here. Let's get more of this. Let's get more of the yellow ochre so that the color changes as I come forward, just as we were saying earlier. Um, more yellow ochre. There's a bit of... Uh, a little island over there. 
So now I can refine this shape and, and make it a little bit more As long as this shape is a bit more spe spe sp sorry, specific than this shape, we'll usually be okay, because it'll look like a reflection then. Okay, now, a um, bit more of the, I'm gonna put a little orange in here. Uh, maybe not that much. Right at this front edge. That is the last place I painted, so it's the wettest, and it's going to bleed in nicely. So let's get some more of that. That's the whipped cream and the cocoa. Now up top on the bridge, we can get, oh gosh, some ultramar... Well, let's go with our darkest stuff, slowest moving stuff. Prussian, burn umber, some red of some sort because if it starts to turn green put some red in it if it's too red put some more of the other stuff in it very 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 dark here So we get to the section where the bridge meets its pylon. Now that area here, where I'm touching now, is quite a bit drier than right here. So I'm going to have to wait a second or two. And I'm going to say, well, what else could I do? Um, let's see. Let's get some lavender, and while this is still wet, make that look foggy. But not over here. So I'm waiting on that area right there to get a little bit less damp so that I can do what I did here. Now I could, if I want to get that extra light thing there, I could rinse the brush, squeeze it out, and like so. I could actually make this edge a bit sharper if I wanted, doing the same thing. Perhaps even something like that here. I don't want to get too crazy. Uh, I do want some of this business to kind of bleed down into the pylon to look like the uh, well when the rain falls on it and dirt and junk and stuff. Still, so I'll just mix up some more of this while I'm waiting for that to get. Prussian blue, cadmium red, a deep purplish color, dull purplish color. It's a little bit of dark back there. At the water line, there's a a kind of an interesting combination. Water is, I love water because it gets, uh, you get the combination, some things are reflections like that, and some things are shadows on the reflections. Um, so there's so many spatial things going on that are really, uh, interesting to look at. I'm going to smear some lines like that 
just to make it look watery. Bit of an artistic conceit. I do need to make a very, very pale reflection in the water of the uh, of Missouri over there. So I want, I made the mark and it's sort of a sharp edge. So what I want to do to soften that, I'm going to bring some, rinse the brush, squeeze it out and bring some dampness right below that so that that can swim in and make a soft edge. Still waiting on this to get a little drier and always remembering that every time I come in there, I'm bringing more water, even if I'm bringing very stiff paint. Yes, Ginger, we'll go out and have some fun later. Don't worry. Okay, now let's get out the rigger brush and make some, where is it? Well, he, there it is. This goofy thing, there's lo lots of different kinds, but they're, uh, get some slightly runnier version of what we've been using here. It just needs to be relatively dark. And then we're going to make some, uh, what do they call them, guy lines. Maybe I can finesse that a bit more. Need some, what do you call them? Street lights or, I don't want to do too much of that. And let's peel it and see what's beginning to happen. So I apologize for forgetting to turn the camera back there. That would have been easier to see, I think. But the main idea there was to uh, get a lot of paint mixed up, have different character. If you squint at this, it, it becomes a big sort of A shape laying on its side with some additions. But uh, there are some variations in color. This was sort of grayish violet. That was dark, deep, murky purple. That was blue. There was some brownishness there. Olive color here. So we were mixing up puddles of color to keep them in the same degree of darkness, same value. And then we wanted to modulate as we went along. So say just a piece here. Let's see. Well, yeah. I think we got a sky and it looks like morning or late in the day. Uh, we didn't overdo <laughs> that back there. It's very, very, very tempting to get uh, 
too detailed there. And then you have to like paint the daylights out of uh, what you got going on here. So always remember what's my background and oh, thank you guys. Um, yeah, you know, melting colors melting into one another. That's just the glory of watercolor. That is the thing that it does. And to, uh, again, remind you that thing about if you're needing colors to move and move kind of smoothly and, 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 uh, uh, in a very soft gradated manner, Think about spraying some water into it as opposed to physically trying to move it with the brush. Because when you touch it with the brush, you can take pigment out. So when you want to do that, then you do that. When you don't want to do that, use a little bit of water. And these, these very small ones that make a very fine mist are, are the best kind because the droplets are tiny. Hello, Roberta. Um, and don't like hose it down like this because you will create a light spot. Uh, bring it up high and, you know, maybe a foot, 18 inches away and spritz it and let it come down the way the, what's the thing about the perfume they sprayed in the air and then you walk into it or whatever. <laughs> so um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's always fun painting skies. Um, and uh, I hope you had a, a safe close to 2023. In some respects, you know, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times, I think, for a lot of us. I hope all of you who are recovering or trying to recover do so. And I guess I won't see arrested. Well, next time we get together, it'll be the new year. So I am going to sign off with a nice 2023 Malbec. Bye-bye.